going to talk about Erard. Erard was one of the most famous builders, piano builders of the 19th century, but he was already born in 1752, making harpsichords in the beginning, but very soon making pianos, square pianos. And, um, but in the 19th century, he made a lot of inventions, which are still, a lot of these things are still being in use in the modern piano today. I'll show you all about it. The reasons for all these inventions and all these changes in the pianos were that the times changed very much and, um, for instance, uh, there was a growing middle class uh, of people who got rich and got money and started attending concerts. And um, so halls had to get bigger. In the same time, the music changed, the tastes changed, the orchestras got bigger and um, the pianos needed more volume so people could hear it in a big hall. To get more volume, there are several things you can do. You need thicker strings, so the whole instrument gets more tension on it. And um, to, if you have thicker strings, you need a thicker soundboard. And if that gets in, in motion, then um, you get more volume because it is heavier, the soundboard is heavier, and that's a very important thing. And for these um, thicker strings and a lot more tension, you need a stronger case. So I showed you last time with Playel that they're going to build some iron uh, uh, struts in it. And here you can see there's already a lot of them in it and an iron plate even. And that's not an invention of Erard, that's a general thing. All builders start doing that kind of the same time in England and in uh, Paris, not in Vienna. They are much later. One of these great inventions of Erard was the agraf. And that's a little uh, block with three holes in it where the uh, strings go through. And that's very different from the stage before. I, last film I showed you the Play L of 1829. It has a wooden bridge with spins in it. But this is much more secure for holding the strings, for the, for the, the sounding length of the piano. And another thing uh, which is typical for Erard is that the dampers are underneath the strings. Actually, that's quite unusual. The other builders didn't do it, and it, that's not something which doesn't exist anymore now in modern pianos. But the agraphs, the agraphs do. That's something which is still the same in the modern piano. So that's something very specific, Erard, and it was not taken over by other makers. It has one advantage, you can take the, all the dampers out in one, in, in one movement, so to say, and in a, in a modern piano or other pianos, it's a lot of work one by one to take the dampers out. So I'm going to take the action out and, and show you how it works. Here we see the very ingenious Erard action. It's full of parts and, and br bridges and springs and everything. And the reason for this is in the razor volume. Um, one thing you can do is not only thicker strings and everything, but also bring the hammer in rest position further away from the string. So you can make more speed and more power. That's very important. But if you have to need a bigger distance here, you also have to push the key further down. This is quite deep. And in other directions, the, the key has to come back all the way up before you can hit again. And Erard invented this system where you, if you release a little bit, the key, you can play it again. Because this bridge holds, holds it in the air. And that's something which is still in the modern piano. So here's a comparison with a very, very complicated Erard action. I wouldn't call an Erard uh, a forte piano, by the way. This is uh, an 1830 Conrad Graf key. So you can see the difference in how uncomplicated this is. So I push the key down and the hammer, which is fixed on the key, goes up like this. The hammer goes up and that's, a, that's almost all, everything there is. But it's wonderful. I mean, you really have the key in your finger. Era was not the only one who made pianos. There were a lot of piano builders. In London, there were a lot of piano builders. In Vienna and in Paris, there were quite a lot of piano builders. And they all did a kind of the same thing in the same period. So, as I explained before, 
when one builder made more keys into the piano, the other, one, the other ones did the same. And also in all the technology, everything changed in the same direction, like what everything, everything is happening now, of course. And there was a huge competition, not only between Paris, London and, and Vienna, but also within uh, Paris. There was a, a huge competition. And it was the period, the 18, starting the 1830s, um, Paris became the cultural center of Europe and many, many uh, virtuosos, it was the beginning of the virtuoso period with Carl Guen and Moscheles and Liszt and Mendelssohn and Chopin, they all went to Paris. And when they got there, it was, let's say, Playel and Irar wanted them to play on their, to give the concerts on their pianos. And um, that was a big difficulty. There's a letter, for instance, of Clara Schumann saying, uh, that it was a, a huge problem because if she would choose for Playel, Irard would be would have been very angry, and the opposite, of course. So it was never it was never easy to choose a piano, and and the competition was was really incredible. There's even a story of it's a bit earlier, 1821, when Moscheles came to Paris for the first time. Uh, he chose a pan, piano by Henri Pape, and Henri Pape not known now, but he was one of the great and famous builders in Paris and also in, he made many inventions, uh, really a genius. Uh, Moshe chose for this pop piano but he was so afraid for the competition to sabotage the piano that he put a guard at the piano between the rehearsal and the concert. Can, can you believe it? In 1996 I was in Paris and I was asked to look at a play piano at a, at a tiny piano shop somewhere and in the attic there was this, this play -all and there was a, a foundation who was interested in buying that one and they asked me to look at it, which I did, which was a nice play L piano, but in the corner of my eye I saw this one and in the same floor. And I thought, oh, that's, I hope I can buy this. And it was for sale, so I bought it. And uh, that's a long time ago, but I, I was really very happy. It was in a kind of a moderate condition and we took out the, the strings, of course, and, and the soundboard and brought it back a little bit because it was modernized at some point. It, some pianos were so beautiful that people wanted to keep them and they sent it back to the factory in the second half of the 19th century, later 19th century, where it got new hammers and new dampers like this one. And this one also got a, cu a few keys extra in the, in, the, in the treble. Now this block is very narrow. It was wider in, in the past. But, and there they found a space to, to put a, these extra keys in. I must say, I saw several of these, which clearly had been back to the factory. And all of these are wonderful, wonderful pianos. So I suppose that's the reason that they were so good that, that people wanted to, to keep them. And this one is a magnificent example. This action which I told you about was not immediately very popular. In the beginning, there were complaints about Liszt and, and, and Mendelssohn complained about the action is playing too heavily. And this is a story that uh, Mendelssohn had a Erard 1832, which he didn't like very much. It was too heavy to play. And he got it through Moscheles, the virtuoso, got it sent back to the factory to improve it. But uh, of course, Mendelssohn was very famous. So Erard decided we'll give him a completely new piano, 1837. This is 1837. If people are specifically interested in Erard, there's this very nice elaborate book, his Lifetimes and his work and everything. It's a beautiful book, so it's by Fritz Janmaat. Um, this is in Dutch, but I think it, it'll, uh, it'll be in English and French and everything, so it's very worthwhile. And so now it's a good moment for Rico to play Mendelssohn on this piano for you. <laughs> 